Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day, and today we are here with a Skatizo guide for Old School RuneScape. Back again with another boss guide. I do enjoy myself a decent amount of Skatizo whenever I get the chance. Got a Skatizo pet behind me, and also got the Dark Claw recently on Hardcore, which I was kind of dry of for a while, so I'm pumped about that. And I'm ready to make this guide for you guys. If you guys do enjoy, though, make sure to leave a like, and anything you guys want to see added to boss guides in the future, any bosses you want to see me do, let me know down below in a comment. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into the guide. So the first thing you'll need to be able to kill Skatizo at all is a Dark Totem. That is how you access Skatizo's lair, so you'll have to get some of those through Slayer or just killing things in the catacombs. And that is the only requirement, I guess. The rest is just kind of what I would recommend. So 75 strength and attack is going to be great. Um, every setup I'm going to show is with the Arc Light. The Arc Light uh, boosts your damage towards the demons by a ton and is so worth it. And Really, there's no rush to do your Skatizo kills. Like, you're only going to get so many of them because you only get so many totems in a, in a lifetime of an account. So you don't want to push it early. Just wait till you get the Arc Light, in my opinion, because it is so, so good. And then also, 70 prayer would be really nice for Piety, but realistically, only 43 is going to be needed. And then a couple more add-ons. 70 range is going to be needed for the gear setups I'll be showing, and I definitely recommend it just so you can unlock Black Dehide for defense. And the Arc Light's probably the weapon of choice you're going to want to bring as well. In regards to what to expect, uh, the pet is a 1 in 65 chance so I mean as far as bosses go you know really good chance problem being it takes like an hour and a half if you're you know doing a really efficient method like bursting or something to get a totem so it's it's, it's not going to happen too often. The dark claw is a 1 in 25 drop which is pretty attainable however if you want to make your slayer own purple with the dark claw it's going to cost a thousand slayer points so that's pretty hefty. A jar of darkness is 1 in 2.5 thousand which is just insane. Um, it's price is about 10 mil or so and then i didn't have it listed here because relatively it's like a it's a less expensive drop than the jar of darkness and there's already too many drops but the uncut onyx is a one at 1k drop and that's like 1.5 mil so that's it as far as the main drops there's not anything too too crazy that's going to be you know somewhat common like a one and 2.5k drop and a one and 1k drop at this type of a boss is not going to be anything you run by. Elite clues are a 1 in 5 chance, and hard clues are a guaranteed chance whenever killing Skatizo. Kills per hour, 10 to 15 probably. Maybe you can get more if you're in a maxed out setup, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. But, I mean, it's not going to be anything that you're going to be grinding out kills really, really quickly on. And the GP per hour is 1.4 to 2 mil, but granted, it's going to be hard to get that many totems. So I, not bad GP per hour, just hard to be able to kill that many. As far as the strategies, most people will be using melee, like almost everyone. If you can afford a Tebow, then you should be ranging uh, because that's going to be better than the Arc Light. And if you're using melee, you're going to want to pray melee and mage. If you're just using the Tebow, it's really simple. You just pray mage because you're at a distance and you're perfectly fine. When killing Skatizo, there are really three things of note uh, in the fight. The first thing is Skatizo itself. The second are his minions that spawn about halfway through. They really don't deal much damage, so I don't even really pay attention to them at all, but they are there. And three, and most importantly, are the pillars. Those will spawn on the four directional sides of the room, and you'll have to go around and kill them. They are one hit if you have an arc light, which is why the arc light is so good here and why I recommend it greatly. If you didn't have an arc light, you'd have to use something like a blowpipe, maybe bring a switch or two it, it definitely be a lot more annoying and the more you have to attack those the less time you're dealing damage to skatizo and it just it makes the process so much longer but that's essentially how we kill it just for some starter info we'll talk more about that as we get into it in terms of gear we'll be looking only at melee gear if you're bringing a tebow i assume you know what like max range is just bring that you'll be good honestly tebow here is disgusting but for those that are bringing melee um a slayer helm if you are on task for a greater demons task or a black demons task that will allow you to get the you know the task bonus which is kind of nice if you're saving up your totems would definitely recommend waiting for a task the first setup shown is kind of a max setup it's not fully max there is a blessing upgrade that you could do to the rada's blessing and a fire cape upgrade that you could upgrade to an inferno cape that's essentially the best gear setup you're going to want the more med setup um, is you know a little bit more cost affordable a lot of downgrades probably about like a five to ten mil uh, gear setup which is pretty attainable i think for a med level player if you're starting to get into bossing and whatnot and that's why i really like skatizo because it's kind of that like that bridge from med level to high level pvm 
And then finally on the far right hand side, that is probably the lower gear setup that I'd recommend coming here with. Uh, and in addition to that, black dehyde is a viable replacement for any of this stuff if you can't afford almost anything in terms of defensive armor. That's cheap and like 7K, so you can buy that. So now onto the inventory and how to get there and showing you a kill. My inventory, I have a divine super combat potion. You can switch that out for a super combat potion or just super pots if you need to. A stamina pot, just kind of useful because you'll be running around a lot with the pillar a couple prayer potions if you feel like it's gonna be a longer kill you can bring a third if you need but for me two is gonna be easily enough I'm bringing a dragon warhammer if you don't have the money for a D warhammer I mean it's by no means a necessity just use the arc light spec that will also lower defense as well so you'll be fine with that a dark totem to get in there a xerix talisman to be able to teleport uh, to the catacombs if you don't have that basically you just need to find yourself to the catacombs of Karend. I'll show it even though realistically um, if you have have one of these totems you know how to get here but yeah it's right here i mean plenty of ways to get here there's a house teleport down here that you can just run northwest or even if you have to go from the boat you can just run west and make your way there a house teleport to get out there is an exit kind of area within the the room but ideally you're going to want to teleport away and just some food for my uh, trip there and whatever damage i'll be taking i also have a lamp as a, a token to myself so go into the xerix heart it'll just bring me right in front of the catacombs and we'll be able to hop on in here pretty easily and so once you're down here, it is just right here. All you have to do is use a totem on the altar and you will be thrown in. You're going to want to pray mage beforehand because whenever you are like away from Skatizo, you want to pray mage. And whenever you are up close, you want to pray melee. So drinking up a stamina sip and throwing the totem on there, we will get thrown in here. Running up to Skatizo, basically just go ahead and pray piety if you need to and then switch on to melee. I'm going to drink up on my super combat potion and really you're good to go. Make sure to drop the specs early so then you get the most utilization out of them and uh, you know increase your dps i mean unless you're specking like that i guess like i said before there are four pillars one in each directional wall um, you just kind of run to them whenever two of them have popped up um, basically for every pillar that pops up um, if you're using an arc light it negates 15 percent of damage so right now it's doing 30 um, and if it's a regular weapon it does 25 percent of damage per altar so if two of them pop up and you have like a regular weapon like a t-bow it would be doing 50% uh, deflection, I guess, towards your attack. So it is pretty notable, and that's why I would recommend once two pop up to start running onto those. Like you can see, I'm not really taking any damage. I mean, oh geez, they kind of all just popped up there, but I'm not taking too much damage. It is pretty easy. I mean, the most, you know, burdensome thing that you'll have throughout this kill is just running around and attacking all these altars. And as you can see, 100 HP, if that if this wasn't getting one hit, you can get an idea of how annoying this boss would be if I didn't have an arc light right now. So that's why I just greatly, greatly recommend it. Again, it's not, I guess, a necessity, but goodness. I, I don't know why you'd need to really rush Katizo kills early in an account. I mean, unless you just really, really want the feeling of doing it. Like I said earlier, I mean, these demons or whatever Necreal spawns in, they don't really do any damage, at least all too much, so you don't have to worry about that. Also, I bring this anglerfish in my inventory. Usually, I would eat it before I come in just so I can be overhealed. Uh, however, I had forgotten. I mean, it's really as simple as just knocking down the pillars whenever they pop up and praying melee when close, mage went away, and... I mean, the kills kind of just come pretty easy. I have actually used a decent amount of food this time compared to my other kills, but I've had kills on my hardcore where, it, honestly, I just tear through it without having to kill any pillars. So I'd say this has been more on the pillar side of what a kill would look like after the kill. Also, turn off your auto-retaliate so you don't have to waste any charges on these because they'll start attacking you, and that's a really long death animation, so you would waste a few. But loot's usually, I mean, pretty decent. You know, you get couple hundred k kill probably and then always kind of a little added in shard or hard clue or whatever if you are into doing clues yeah skatizo pretty easy boss as far as how you can get out of here if you'd like to in the southwest corner there is a portal that you can go ahead and use and i think that'll just throw you back to the kind of entry point of the catacombs or you can use a house teleport if you are you know off to do something else so yeah, that is my guide on Skatizo. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Like I said earlier, if you did, make sure to leave a like. Anything you want to see in these videos going forward or any bosses you want me to cover, let me know and I will try to do what I can in terms of that. Be looking forward to the comments, always watching. And if you guys want to see more videos like this as soon as they go live, make sure to subscribe. I'll also be streaming later tonight on Twitch, doing some hardcore Iron Man, so check out the links below. Got a Twitter down there and everything. But with that said, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh, peace.